All right, so for this tutorial, we're gonna do something. Um, we're gonna just try to download the some arrest data for Baltimore. So we're gonna keep using our week three base data, but um, the goal of this week is to show you how you can find GIS data, download it, um, and then we're gonna bring it into QGIS, and then we're gonna do a, a summarize by population. Um, and even though I'm gonna be helping you prep a lot of your individual data, um, I just want to show you this so that um, down the line you kind of have an idea about um, how this stuff works. So the first thing to do is we're going to download and catalog arrests data. Um, it's one of the more important kind of uh, pieces of information that um, that is recorded um, for law enforcement. So the first thing to do is let's go and open up our, our browser and we're going to type in um, Baltimore um, police data. And most cities are doing this now where they have kind of an open data portal. So you should be able to find uh, baltimorepolice.org open data and click that link right there. Um, as I've mentioned before, there's, there's a, there's, it's different in every department, but um, in general you have kind of an incidence database, which is when um, there's kind of something where they've identified a, a place or a time in which um, an officer is, is responding to something. But then the arrests are the actual kind of uh, the first step of the legal action in which an officer um, either apprehends or uh, takes custody of a person. Um, and then, you know, it looks like Baltimore has kind of calls for service, which is another, another uh, data point. But we're interested in the arrests data today. So go ahead and click that link. And what we're going to see is it's showing us a bunch of fields here. So it looks like we're going to get an age variable, um, you know, a bunch of different things, arrest date, time, location, number, the charge, charge description, district, gender, all that kind of stuff. And so we could download this as a lot of different things, um, but what we want to download it as is a shape file. So a spreadsheet is kind of how a lot of this stuff is entered and stored. But all a spreadsheet needs is a latitude and a longitude, and you can turn it straight into a, a point file, a shape file. Um, and so I, I believe, I mean, if we wanted to take a look at the data before we download it, we can click this tab here. And what we're going to see is that, um, I hope, there we go, is we get a peek at the kind of attributes that will be associated with every point. And so we can kind of scroll back and forth, and yet we see, aha, here's our latitude and our longitude, so we know that, um, each of these records is going to be represented by a specific point on the ground, which is great. Um, it'll be good for us to be able to see that. If we didn't want to include all of the data, we could very well, um, we could filter it. So we could say, you know, maybe we only want the year 2020 or we only want the year 2019. Um, I think for the purposes of what we're doing, we'll just take all of the records. It looks like there are 87,000 records total. And so um, I think it'll be interesting to look at all of it. But, you know, occasionally, for instance, if you were uh, looking at the city in which your incident took place, you might decide to only take the year around which it happened or a couple of years because sometimes these patterns change over time. But we're going to take all of, all of these 87,000 records. Um, and I think it goes back. We can just sort it descending to see how far back it goes. Um, it looks like, yeah, 2013. So this is 2013 to the present, um, or at least that's what's being represented here. So I'm going to say download, and let's download this as a shape file. And you can save like that. And um, it, it downloads as a zipped file. And a zipped file is just a folder that kind of compresses everything. So what I tend to do with zipped files is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag it um, kind of onto the desktop. I want to bring it so that I can unpack it into the folder that I, I want it to go into. So I'm going to go 01 my data folder and in here I'm going to open up this and this is my, um, my zipped file and I'm going to select these guys and unpack them into, into here like that. And so another way you can unzip files is to kind of decompress them and you can right click and, and choose to unzip or extract is what it's called. You can extract them. But it, do, it does the same thing. If you double click a zip file, select the files inside of it and then pull it out and dump it into your folder, it does the same thing as extracting. So that's just as easy. 
So now that we've got the arrests there, uh, what I'd like us to do is um, open up QGIS. And you can either use this file I've created for you, um, or you can start it from, you know, you can start it fresh. So I'm going to just use the file that I've created, um, and we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so assuming that you have your project open, go ahead and um, let's actually bring in uh, the Baltimore census blocks data first. And if you bring that in, um, something we haven't talked at all about is um, projections in this course so far. Something we haven't talked about yet are projections in this course so far. And um, that's what the first conceptual video is about. And, and you don't need to know like everything about it, and it might seem overwhelming. But it's good to just be aware that um, all of these data are in a projection, which means that there's a, it's just like a, a Cartesian coordinate system. There's an X and a Y, just like you know, just like a, a regular graph that you do in math class. And the X and the Y in a projected system means that it's planar. So these units down here represent, um, in this case, meters from an origin that's usually down on the equator somewhere. And so, um, actually it's not on the equator in this case, but <laughs> um, X and Y, meters to meters, and that's how we can make measurements and things like that. So the only thing I want you to notice at this point is that down here, there's a code for our current coordinate system. And you don't need to know too much about it, but I want to just show you that if you click your layer here and then you hover over it, it'll show you um, EPSG 26985, and that's just telling you what the coordinate system is. So all these coordinate systems, like the police districts, um, they're all in the same coordinate system. But this data that we just downloaded, the arrests, if we bring that in, you can click and drag or double click, is actually in a different coordinate system. I don't know if you can see, but it says EPSG 2248. But it still shows up. So it's still showing up because the program is smart and it kind of knows, oh, well, you your project is in this one. Um, these guys are the same, but this one that we just threw in is different. And so the program says, well, I'm going to reproject it on the fly so that it lines up because the computer can kind of do that in its head. But what I want to do ultimately is I'd love to summarize arrests kind of by uh, block group so that we can kind of make comparisons about how many arrests per person are happening in each of these, these block groups. And so if I want to actually use tools, which are call, called geoprocessing tools, where we actually count the number of points in each of these kind of bins here, these spatial bins, then we need them to be in the same projection. We need the code to be the same between arrests and um, you know our census blocks. So to do that, I'm going to save the arrests as a new file, and I'm going to put it in the proper projection. So if you didn't open up the project file um, and you just opened Q and then dragged the data in, um, you probably should drag in this census blocks first so that the project file will take on the same coordinate system. So it's, it sounds complicated, but all we're going to do is I'm going to right click arrest and go to export, save features as. I want to make sure it's an Esri shape file. And I'm going to go to um, here and make sure I put it in the right spot, which for me is on my desktop. And I'm going to call it the same exact thing. I'm going to call it arrests. But then I'm going to put an underscore and put 26985, which um, to me um, is signifying that it's in the proper projection because I'll have two arrests shape files at that point. So I'm going to say save. And now here's the most important thing. What I need to do is actually change the CRS, the coordinate reference system. So I'm going to click this and pick. If your project CRS doesn't show up as 26985, which it does for me, but if it doesn't for you, you can click this guy right here, select CRS, and then just type in the numbers that you need, 26985, and it shows up here as the proper one. So that's the one we want. Say OK use the defaults for everything else and say OK. And it's saving them as a new thing. And there they are. So before I run the one tool I want you to know, I want to just talk about this data a little bit. So we know that this arrests data kind of comes with information or attributes. 
And if I was interested in what those attributes are, I could use my query tool, which is this I up here, or identify features, and I could click any one of these points. And I would see, in my identify results, I would see OK. This point right here is uh, male, age 35, uh, black, and this is the date of the arrest, and then this is the arrest location as an address. And here's the charge code and the charge description, and it was in the Western District um, in that neighborhood, and these are a lot long. Um, it would be really time consuming to try to click all these points and figure things out, right? So um, in some, some points you'll notice, if I click this one, for instance, I bet, um, yeah, see there's actually multiple, multiple points that are happening at that one location because over time there is most likely going to be different street corners or different addresses that have multiple arrests that happen at them. So these are all on top of each other, which is, is kind of crazy, but um, if we want to visualize the data so that we can kind of just get a sense of, what, of what's even there, um, instead of running queries like we did the first time, we can actually just throw a color or symbology on top of this, right? So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go here for arrests and I'm gonna double click and go to symbology. And one really simple thing I can do is categorize. So I'm gonna categorize, and this is a nominal classification. I'm gonna categorize by race. And so if I do that, I hit classify, and then I get probably A for Asian, B for black, and W for white. And then I need to look at the metadata to see what these two are here. But I'm gonna hit apply and we're gonna see what happens. So now, if I hit apply to my categorized point cloud by race, we're gonna see that, yeah, there's kind of a, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of black people that are in this area and this, these areas are more white arrests and things like that. So I think to keep things relatively simple, let's just try to take, um, you know, we could try to take just maybe exactly, we could do four years of time, or let's do five years of time. Let's do 20, 20, uh, 2015 to 2020, and let's just see if we can get that query down. Um, and, and then we'll summarize it by population. Okay, so what we wanna do is go up here to our selection tools and we're going to select features by expression. So if you have trouble finding that, um, look for it next to the kind of pointer with the yellow thing, and it's the one with the sum thing on it. So we're going to select features by expression. And um, we want places where the um, arrest date, and then we can get, let's get all of the dates here so we can see what we're looking at. And we want the arrest date to be well, so it's interesting, actually, if we include 2015 and include all of 2020, then that's actually six years of data, um, which I think that's I think that's okay. So let's go to 2014, the last day of 2014. So we want the arrest date to be um, greater than this day, which is going to include everything after it. And then we want it to be less than 2020. 10101. So we're gonna we want it to be that and we want it to be arrest date is less than 2021 -0101. So if I select those, it should give me a selection of of just that range, so the six year range. And so now that I've got my selection, I can right click my arrests, export, and then I want to save select features as and okay we want that's the correct projection so that's good 26985 i'm going to go here and now now i'm going to call this arrests um and i'm going to just call it 2015 to 2020 like that so we've, what we've done is kind of sampled a specific year yearly kind of data set so we're going to be able to divide by 6 and get some kind of yearly um amount out of it so now we've done a subquery of our original data set, which is great. So I'm going to remove this other one. And um, now what I'd like to do is I'm going to use a tool called points in Polygon. Um, but I think what I want to do is actually summarize not by block 
group because as I look at this I see that these block groups um, are so small that we're going to get some statistically bizarre things. So I think what we'll do is we'll summarize by police district because they're a large enough spatial bin that the kind of law of large numbers we're going to get patterns that are more interesting than if we do such a small uh, such a small bin. So we'll get more population and we'll also get more um, more arrests. So the points of polygon tool we can run with arrests right now. So I'll just show you how that one works. And so we're going to go, if you don't have your processing toolbox, you can go up over here and type in uh, points and it's called count points in polygon. If you don't have your processing toolbox, you can go up here and it's under this tab right here or control alt T or command option T probably on a Mac. So count points in polygon, we want to count in Baltimore police districts, we want to count the number of arrests and we're going to call this field just maybe just um, you know just arrests or something like that maybe that'll that'll help so I'm going to save this file it's a new file and we'll say um, Baltimore underscore police districts and then I'm going to do hyphen with arrests so I'm saving that as a new file I'm going to hit run Oop, I guess it ran, but it says I got a little bit of an error code. But I'm just going to open that up, and I did it just fine. So now we can see over the course of six years um, the number of arrests for each uh, each police district. So it seems like that's fine. Um, now to get the population into these police districts, I'm going to use the same tool, but I don't have any points yet. So to get points, I'm actually going to do something called create a centroid. And so the tool that I want you to see now is called Centroid, and it's under Vector Geometry here. And I'm going to create from this Baltimore Census Blocks Centroids, which is going to put a point in the middle of every census block. And so to do that, just run the tool Centroid, and I'm going to call this Baltimore Centroids, oh, sorry, Census blocks and then I do a hyphen and say centroids and what this is going to do is just allow us to count the number of polygons or sorry count the number of points in each polygon and do a sum so that we're going to sum the number of people that are represented by the centroids so I'm going to say run there are all of my centroids but the cool thing is is that those centroids all carry with them the population information right the total pop so when I when I do my points in polygon now, police districts, right? So points in polygon, count points in polygon. I'm going to say Baltimore police districts. Oh, with arrests is what we want because that has some information we're interested in. And now we're going to summarize how many census blocks there are. But we want to do this weight field. And so the weight field is going to, add, instead of just adding one point for every census block it's going to weight it by total population so now if a popul if there was a 5 and a 2 it would make a 7 instead of it just being a 1 and a 1 which would be a 2 so i'm going to call this total pop and i'm going to save this as a new file again and this is police districts with arrests and i'm going to say with total pop as well so hopefully this should have everything we say run, and it's done. And this this error message is actually okay. It's not a big deal. So now I'm going to remove and remove. My final file, if I did my, my homework right, is a police districts file that now, if I check out the information, it should have a total population figure and an arrests figure for each of the police districts. And so then we can use those if we want to come up with a ratio between arrests and total pop. So um, that's all for this video. Um, I just wanted to show you how to bring in data and summarize it by a different polygon using those tools. In the quiz, I will have one question about um, kind of an arrest rate, and I'm hoping you can kind of figure that out on your own. If you need any help, I'll have office hours from 4 to 5.30 today. Um, I also am available by appointment on Thursday or Friday. So uh, good luck. Thanks.